Hey guys, welcome back to another one. This video is about why I am exiting my position in stable coins and maybe you should consider as well. This was the article that pushed me over the limit, third strike, and I was out after this one. Coinbase drops plan to launch interest product after CEO's SEC comments. And I'm a huge fan of BlockFi and Celsius, these lending platforms. But like I said, this article was the one, the third strike that pulled me out of it. And if you're interested in this content, please like and subscribe to the channel. It means a bunch. All right, so let's dig right into it. So essentially this came out yesterday, but Coinbase has decided to halt its plan to launch its interest earning product two weeks after CEO Brian Armstrong took the SEC to task on Twitter for its lack of guidance on the manner. And if you're unfamiliar with this, uh, Coinbase was going to come out with something similar to BlockFi and Celsius, uh, where you can you know, lend out your um, crypto and earn APY back. Not quite as much as Celsius and BlockFi, but you could get about 4% APY, which is still you know, hundreds of times better than what the uh, banks are offering right now. And yes, the same Brian Armstrong who he just went on Twitter and lit it up. Uh, it was pretty entertaining to see. So you can see that he is very passionate about this. And I was kind of taken aback um, that he uh, just kind of you know did a complete 180. And that was the third straw for me um, to kind of you know take a step back because for me I have a lot of. Um, my savings accounts in these uh, stable coins and I know you know you guys might not um, but it's kind of my emergency uh, account money if you will uh, that I was earning a pretty solid APY back so why not you know emergency account you want to keep it in US dollars and I don't want that tied up in case something happens so what could happen what what is the uh, other two straws um, well the uh, Treasury is looking into stable coins and one of the big factors is the uh, President's Working Group on Financial Markets. They're supposed to present a report here within, rumor has it, sometime this week. And it could, uh, you know, have some recommendations for possible regulatory framework for stable coins. Now, what does that mean? I'm not exactly sure. Uh, we'll dig into what is the President's Working Group first. And the President's Working Group, uh, just straight out of Wikipedia, it was something that was signed back in 1988. And it has, you know, three main purposes, uh, essentially to recognize and uh, essentially just help out investor confidence, which is kind of funny because I am losing confidence uh, by them having these, you know, regulations and meetings and not really talking about what's going to happen. Uh, it shall consult with, uh, you know, exchanges and other, you know, Coinbase and uh, all of these exchanges. Um and you know kind of find out some solutions and then it's going to report directly to the president and that's essentially what this does who is in it we will check it out so right now in attendance the chair is janet yellen and then there's jeremy powell and gary gensler so sec head and then the uh, head of the fed and then the secretary uh, treasury are some of the big names that are in there everyone else is listed below and let's check out these people as you know uh, janet yellen if you don't know um and I don't mean to bash these people. I know I have nothing but respect for them because they have a lot of years in finance, maybe too many years uh, in finance, and they're very skeptical into uh, cryptocurrency and all of this new technology. But she is the uh, Secretary of Treasury, and like I said, she has a huge background in finance, um, you know, PhD, and et cetera, et cetera. But if you just look up uh, Janet Yellen, she is not a huge fan of stable coins and cryptocurrency, like I said. So she is a huge advocate for the government to move quickly and establish um, some regulatory framework for stable coins. And she is very worried about stable coins and what it could, the impact of you know stable coins, what if it goes wrong. Um, luckily for us, you know, move quickly in government terms it's normally not all too fast but um, it is quick enough for me to want to back out of you know BlockFi and uh, Celsius and just move my money back into regular US dollars into a fiat bank account um, because I, I really don't know how quick quick is so that is Janet Yellen 
uh, Jerome Powell, uh, Jay Powell. He is the uh, essentially the head of the uh, Federal Reserve System. Uh, so he is in charge, more or less, of printing money and in charge of the money flow. And like I said, just like Janet Yellen, a uh, huge background. Uh, he's been in and out of different financial positions for a very long time. So huge props to him. Um, but also, he is not a huge fan of um, stable coins uh, in particular because, you know, money printing is his thing and his stable coins are kind of like printed money that he didn't print. So, of course, he's not happy with that. But he's been testifying, you know, uh, quite often that he is not a huge fan of uh, CBDCs um, or digital coins, stable coins in particular. CBDCs, that's a different discussion. But uh, you wouldn't need stable coins. You wouldn't need cryptocurrencies if you had a digital U.S. currency, uh, Powell said. That's what he's in favor for. But at the same time, he's also said that he is in favor of not rushing uh, because we are the U.S. Uh, we are the federal or the global reserve, if you will. So when we do digital currencies, he thinks we need to do it right, which 100% yes, but the rollout might take a little bit too long. And that is some people's concern as well. And then the last person, uh, Gary Gensler, he is also, you know, at, well, first and foremost, he is the head of the SEC right now. Um, so the New York Stock Exchange, he is the oversight, um, you know, body for the uh, stock exchanges, for lack of a better words. And like, Everyone else, you know, huge props to him. He has a huge financial background as well. And he's also very popular for this video series in MIT. Um, I actually did watch it. It's very uh, eye-opening and it kind of just walks you step by steps from the basics of blockchain technology and Bitcoin. And uh, you can watch on YouTube and 2x speed, much better there. But, you know, huge props to him. But on the downside, he, for, for me, personally. He is huge into litigation and he is a huge advocate for an increase in cryptocurrency oversight. Um, he thinks that most of the cryptocurrencies, he wasn't very specific, uh, are um, securities. And with that being said, he and his body of the SEC needs to have oversight of all of cryptocurrency. And that definitely could have some huge impacts for the future. So those are um, the three people. Oh, and one more thing, Gensler, you know, he kind of reiterated that even crypto staking and lending services were to fall under the SAC's jurisdiction. Um, with that being said, um, there's a lot of unknowns as to um, what he would like to um, do with, you know, the crypto staking and lending um, outside of just taxing it. Like, do you need the KYC? What, what other type of um, things would he in institute? Um, so that is strike two, the president's working group. Uh, strike one, once again, was the uh, Coinbase kind of backing down from their lending program, even though the CEO was uh, not very happy about it two weeks ago. And then this last one is uh, Jerome Powell, who we just looked at a second ago. He is having a um, a little position. Um, let's see. Let's just read this one. He's having a testimony in front of Congress, and that'll be later in the month. So the U.S., by contrast, is having trouble uh, concluding its multi-year exploration into the possibility of an e-dollar. In fact, the upcoming Federal Reserve paper uh, for the U.S. digital currency won't take a position um, whether the central bank of the United States will or even should create one. Instead, Jay Powell said in a recent testimony to Congress, paper will be, you know, talk about digital currencies and in the same paper uh, later this uh, month that'll come out, he'll talk about stable coins and the impact uh, for stable coins. So that is kind of the third straw um, for this month of September that, you know, kind of is causing me to worry a little bit. And so there are three more or less potential outcomes here. One potential route could be stable coins are designated as systematically risky. And with that being said, I, there's a potential for, you know, 
the government to want to freeze the accounts for these risky assets because they are worried that they might cause, you know, the next economic crash. And that is a very worst case scenario, but a scenario that I don't want to be a part of for now. Uh, let's see. They could also label some stable coins as securities, meaning Gary Gensler would once again be in direct control of those. And then stable coins could also be treated as if they were bank deposits. And all three of these scenarios, you know, there's a different set of litigation that could happen, but I'm assuming one of these three scenarios is going to happen and very soon. So I would rather not have my money in stable coins when one of these happens and I just have it in US dollars for hopefully another month or two. And yes, I am going to bite some, you know, missing out on some APYs, but I think I'm okay with that. Um, so like I said, I was in BlockFi before and I'm a huge advocate for BlockFi because BlockFi, let's see, if you have a USDC, you get about 8% APY right now and a traditional savings account or check-ins account, you get 0.01%. So that is a huge difference. Once again, Celsius is the other one and their stable coins, uh, USDC 8.88%. So very similar and also way more than traditional bank accounts. Why am I so concerned about this? Because in the past, both Circle and USDT have froze. They have no problem freezing uh, stable coins. It is something within their realm of possibility to do. So if you know these stable coins are such a risky asset and they don't want a flood of people just you know removing their stable coins out of the system, they might freeze accounts. I could definitely see that as a possibility. And it's to keep things more stable. Um, but I don't want my money to be frozen, especially my emergency account money. That is why I'm choosing to transfer it out. And I will say both this article with Circle and uh, USDC and this one with USDT, uh, they have to do with law enforcement and the US government asking for this to happen. But it is both within the realm of possibility of, you know, freezing stable coins. And then last but not least, if you look at the terms and conditions in your bank account, so this is BlockFi, you scroll down way to the bottom. I'll just read this last sentence. You will cooperate, or BlockFi, we will cooperate with any regulatory or government entity's instruction or requests with regards to your crypto interest account, including freezing it and seizing its asset if mandated. So worst case scenario, once again, if the government, uh, between all these three different strikes that happen, ask for BlockFi Celsius to freeze the accounts because they don't want a influx of people just, you know, running away from their stable coins. They could potentially freeze your account for a little bit and just keep that money in place until there's a plan in place to move things to somewhere else. And I don't want to be part of that situation. That is why I'm choosing to, you know, take my money out of Celsius, take my money out of BlockFi, move it into a traditional bank account until... Um, I hear more about why Coinbase dropped its plans to stop its Lend program, why the uh, president's working group uh, is going to come out with their report hopefully later this week. And then the last one is um, the Federal Reserve with Jay Powell to come out with his paper and his report later this month. So those are the three different triggers that are causing me to want to just pull my money out. Uh, it might just sit for the rest of September and maybe October. And then if nothing really does happen, I'll just move my money back in uh, in November because I am a huge fan of getting 8% APY on you know just money that's normally in a bank account uh, as my emergency fund. So like I said, if you do like this content, please like and subscribe and I will see you on the next one.